The illustrious Jabba bids you welcome. I'm going to regret this. I'm Pete Mitchell. He's Peyton Jones. And this is the Church Planner Podcast. Brought to you by Church Planner Magazine. Hey, Church Planner, this is Pete Mitchell. And this is Peyton Jones. Hey, you just got done with an interview, didn't you, Mr. Jones? Well, it's funny. I I did. I um, Man, I never know if they know how to take me on the phone because it's always limited time. And so I'm talking real fast and I get all animated. So, uh, in fact, at, at one point I said something. It was really brilliant. And I go, whoa. I go, look at that. I go. We should tweet that. Let's tweet that right now. And she just started busting up. <laughs> hey, I just said something really cool. No one else is going to quote me. I got to quote myself. That's what I told her. I go, well, that wasn't in the book. I go, we better tweet that. But, I you know, it, it was cool. Like, no joke. When she got on the phone with me. So this is Who was Outreach. It? Okay, Outreach. Huh? Yeah, I was going to say, you didn't tell Outreach everyone, magazine. Everyone. Yeah. This was cool, man. Like, this is what an author wants to hear. She said, I get these assignments all the time. She goes... Your book fired me up. Really? More than any book I've ever read on one of these assignments. Yes. Did you say that's what the book is meant to do, baby? Did you say, can I quote you on that and put that on my website? I just did. Slash outreach magazine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it just you know what, man? Like, like, I gotta be honest. Um no, this book No, lie to us. Lie to us. It it was it was no, but being honest now, um, Church Zero was fun. This book, it's deeper and it's it's heavier. Like it's talking about it's talking a lot about the Holy Spirit and and his power. So there are times where I feel like there's some deep parts of Church Zero and then there's a bunch of funny stuff. I feel like it flipped in this book. You know, there's more deepness than there is. So in I mean, other words, I probably should wait for the movie. <laughs> no, it, it's still, you know what? Other people read it, say, you know, you pulled it off again. So, uh, but I can't see it. So, so the thing is, when you're so close up to it, you can't really see it. And then you finally feel like, you know what? Then someone else reads it. So, uh, Mac Lake, he loved the first one. He loved Church Zero. He'll still say, like, it's the best church planning book he's ever read. And so he, he dipped into this one. He's like, man, you did it. He, like, I don't know how you did it. So I'm like, dude, I had to help on this book. Trust me, because it was a struggle. Nice, nice. Well, if this is your first time listening to the Church Planner Podcast, pretty much all we do is talk about ourselves and how great we are and the books awesome. that we write. And uh, the book, by the way, we do shameless plugs as well here. Uh, it is reachingtheunreachedbook.com. And by the way, we're always professional. We never leave our phone on during the recording of the podcast. <laughs> and no Only trains. The best for you. No trains ever interrupt our podcast. No. No, that train is famous, though. They're it, sinking the train well, below ground, so it's I not going to whistle anymore. My I was, house value just went up. I was talking to you about Travis right before we jumped on this, and, and Travis made the comment to me. He goes, so in other words, that train is just you beeping out Peyton <laughs> from time to time. <laughs> We we actually had a guest who dropped a naughty word, and no joke, Travis used the train to beep him out. Are you serious? I am dead serious. What podcast was that? I'll tell you after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's so funny. I remember when I used to do uh, hardcore church planning with you, and then I dumped you. You did, and actually, I don't. I don't look at the numbers, but I keep getting people contact me about that one. So you might have you might have jumped off the wrong ship, my well, friend. Well, I think I was holding you back. I, I'm fully confident I was holding you back. You think so? Oh, absolutely. Believe me, everyone who listens to this podcast is not listening for Pete Mitchell. <laughs> that is, no one's like, man. What nuggets of wisdom can Pete drop this week? That's never been a line said by anyone ever. <laughs> but the smack talk rocks. We got to be honest. By the way, guys, if you're new, 
This is Smack Talk. We don't apologize for it. It just is. And we will be talking about, uh, wait for it, spiritual gifts. And probably a charger. And will this or, be the last one on spiritual gifts? Please say yes. Yes. And we might talk, normally in Smack Talk, though, we kind of have certain topics we hit, we, we hit back. Like, if I think over the years, we always have something. That we'll go through seasons where we come back to something. Right now, it's Chargers. Before that, it was Star Wars underwear. So, uh, oh, by the way. Um, I do daughter, have some Captain America underwear on today. Oh, dude. So so here's the deal. Um, my daughter uh, thinks that Chewbacca's name is Hibunka. Have we talked about nice. that? Nice. So she goes around talking about Hibunka. And uh, that's kind of cool. I like that. So yeah. I've started calling Chewbacca Hibunka. <laughs> Dude, funny story, true story this morning. People who know me know I am not a morning person. I'm so much not a morning person. I'm not an early afternoon person. Like it just, I don't, I don't do well until the evening. So first thing I got to do when I wake up, jump in the shower. I don't do anything else until I've had my shower. So I'm literally in the shower and all of a sudden the bathroom door starts to open and I notice no one walks in. So I immediately know it's not Jamie. It's one of the kids, <laughs> right? So then all of a sudden Luke sticks his head around the door and he's like, hi, dad. And I go, how you doing, dad? I, I mean, bud, <laughs> like I am not a morning person. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, and I, I don't, I literally have no idea what he was saying to me after that. I couldn't understand it. I didn't want to understand it. I'm like, dude, I'm in my shower time. This is this is Pete's quiet time. This is how Pete gets right with the world right here, right now. But yeah, so dude, I am a grunty cape. So here's the deal: I am I am a morning person, but if I haven't had my shower, it doesn't matter if I've had coffee. I oh, am really? like okay. It goes from me being Homer Simpson to becoming Flanders. Once I have a shower and coffee, I'm like, Oakley, Doakley, howdy, howdy, hi ho, neighbor, you know, like then I'm all happy and animated, but I got to have that combination. It's, it's a two hit combo, man. It's got to be the shower and the coffee. Coffee alone will not do it. This time only comes out by coffee and shower. Nice. Asha, Asha. It's probably because you like to, to wash your hair, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Um, Remember, Pete, that Elisha did call two she-bears out of the woods to maul 42 youths. I tell you, if you can call a she-bear where I live, that's impressive. That would be a spiritual gift I would like to know about. Hey, hey, listen, um, out of all the spiritual gifts, man, that's that's the one that, that, you know, to call. It's like something out of Dungeons and Dragons. You're like. You know, in Dungeon Master, I call two Shivas out of the woods. You know, like that is the coolest thing to call upon right there. See, I, I okay, wouldn't know. Okay, Peyton, uh, roll your uh, hexagonal dice for. Uh, yeah, I I didn't. Uh, you didn't get those references. It well, was the 80s, man, we play D and D. Haven't you watched Stranger Things, dude? I, have you not heard the stories of who my parents were? <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Baptist pastor's kid. Uh, D&D obviously was not welcome in the house. Oh, my gosh, not welcome in the house. I couldn't even read comic books growing up. I told you about my comic book experience. Just, hey, you're making up for it with that Captain America underwear. Nothing like being a 40-year-old man Dude, wearing super. <laughs> 5% spandex. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. 5% spandex. Sorry, dude. I am eating this chocolate on the podcast. I'm eating dairy milk mixed with an Oreo. It's like America and Britain got together and had a baby. It is so good. I'll bring you some this weekend. Hey, you know what? I was actually going to ask you about this weekend, but I I don't think I should ask you about it on the podcast. What time is the event? (laughs) Well, Pete, since we're only professional on this podcast, it's going to be new. (laughs) Till when? I know that's during the baby's nap time. It is. That's that's what I'm trying to like work out because Jamie's not home until still three three thirty, I think. So just show up when you can. I may not be able to get there till two. Is that cool? Yeah, dude. And then you're going to have to drive my car. Like, man, this is boring. And then you'll show up and I'll be like, hey, hey. You'll, you'll need to drive my car from about 2 to 2.05. So I'm only going to let you drive it for five minutes. If my wife is listening, I don't really mean that my daughter's party was boring. 
See, with with hardcore, it's starting to get legit now. My wife's starting to listen to that, so I just gotta, I got to cover my bases. Man. You're trying to make sure that if she were to accidentally stumble on the dial over Church Planner you podcast, said the baby's party was boring. Travis no, was telling me no. when Travis was telling me he goes, yeah. Whenever people find out that I work for you, they always ask me, "Hey, do you uh, edit uh, Church Planner podcast?" And he goes, "No." <laughs> He's like, "That's the one I don't edit. I edit hardcore church planning." <laughs> So that's funny, but you know what? Um, to be honest though, this is kind of cool. I know we don't do this a lot, but I do want to give a shout out, man, for my baby to have made it to four years old. I do want to give a shout out. I'm actually really excited about Saturday. There were times, man, we didn't know she'd make it till four. Really? Well, yeah. You know, all the times, man, where she stops breathing in the night and crap, Yeah, we've ended up in the emergency room. I used to be a deep sleeper. I am the lightest sleeper in the world now. Really? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, this this baby, because Andrew has, <laughs> Andrew has earplugs in every night <laughs> because somebody snores in our house. I'm not going to say who it is, but somebody hey, snores. I noticed that you've upgraded your Breathe Right strips because I don't see a gash on your nose. <laughs> we, we did. I literally threw that box of Breathe Right strips <laughs> off Catalina Island in the trash. It was ripping skin off my nose. It's so so I had to wait until the skin grew back before I could use the Breathe Right strips. But they leave a deposit of, like, gel on my nose that, like, you have to scrub it off. It's weird. But it doesn't take my skin off. I guess there's there's a little pro to every That's situation. Stupid. It's the gel. Yeah. It's just gel that ends up on your nose. And yeah. it, it rips that off. So what else has been happening to you this last week? I feel like... Uh, I've told you all my good stories already. We talked too many times during the week this we, week. We did. And you guys don't realize smack talk is just what me and Pete do. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, if I've, so if I've already got it out of my system, it's like, I can't go back and rehash that story. I've already told it to Peyton. Yeah, man. So, uh, okay. So I built a Star Wars Lego with uh, with with my daughter. Which so, one? What, what, Which Star Wars well, Lego? Oh, it was it was cool. Like I was worried I missed it because I go to I, I live pretty close to to Legoland. So when we go to Legoland, we got the pass. You know, just you know, exit through the gift shop, and uh, you know, I noticed that there was a Lego that freezes Han Solo and carbonite, and it actually has a little function where you put the little Han Solo okay, in. Is this you... the one that's a round circle thing? Yeah. yeah, had it, had it. Luke's already destroyed it, but yeah. And the dog ate it, right? Then the dog. Well, ate I'm it. sure the dog has pooped out Legos. I mean, we can practically build the, the poop in the backyard with Legos. <laughs> you could build probably like a Lego Death Star with all the Legos the dogs pooped out. Dude, I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, if you want to know where the toys are in my house, you go to the dirt on the outside of my house because the dogs <laughs> bury it. Like, you host the poop off and, oh, there's the toy. Yeah. Well, that's still so, good. It made it through just fine. It's like one of those um, archaeology, like arts and crafts toys that you get at Toys R Us, you know, just, you know, brush it a little bit. and Oh, look, there's a skeleton in that lump of clay. I'm just Except saying. it's not a lump of clay and it ain't a skeleton. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's a so good one. Ways. That's a good so, one. So we built this Lego and it's always funny because, you know, it's kind of like a free pass for me to buy Star Wars Legos because, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm discreet. Like, I don't come home with the $400 Death Star, you know, but... Or the Millennium Falcon, which is like two hundred bucks. Not that I've, I've almost anything. done it. It is cheaper on Amazon. All of your Star Wars Legos are cheaper on Amazon. Oh, that's even good with enough. the discount, even with the discount from uh, that's good to know, man. Yeah. So, anyways, I end up uh, we we picked up Han Solo Frozen Carbonite. Nice. And uh, my youngest daughter, who's now a Hebunka fan, has also discovered Boba Fett. Han Solo is frozen, but that's not Carbonite. Sorry. She- <laughs> So she is a fan of Boba Fett. Now, nice. it's cool to see her at three, um, you know, almost four, because that's about the same age when I accepted Boba Fett into my heart. Uh, <laughs> you did not better. just say that on this I podcast. Did, I did say that because other than becoming a Christian, watching Star Wars was, oh, and getting married and having kids. Okay, no, there is a pecking order. But uh, other than that, Star Wars, that, that was like our generation, man. That was, we, you know, that was almost our identity, you know. Dude, I, mean, I was Luke, telling I'm... Jamie yesterday, I go, you realize that Luke, the name Luke, is kind of like uh, Mike and John to our generation. Like everyone's named their kid Luke because of Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or Lucas. 
Well, same thing. Before the prequels, though. Like, that name went a little out of style. After I, I don't know. What's the prequel? I don't know. So, anyways, going back to uh, to the deal, um, did we talk? We we did talk about Rogue One, just not on the podcast. I've I've redeemed myself. I did watch Rogue One, and it was a much better movie second time around. I didn't feel it was as boring. I still thought the rousing pep talk she gives to the council is still corny, but that was mainly because of the music in the background. Who cares? Well, nobody does. To have but. a fight scene with Adats in Hawaii. That's basically yeah. what it is. Oh, dude, in everything about the movie this time, I was like, I was like, this is like a 10. This movie's a 10. That's what I said. I said Empire, Rogue One, yeah. Force Awakens, Star Wars, Return of the Jedi. That's all of them. I actually kind of want to go watch it again. It's been less than a week. I own it. it. I own it. Come on in. The water's great. I'm over. Hey, I'm down this Saturday for the birthday. But here's the deal. This is something I didn't know is um, uh, Boba, yeah, um, Boba Fett is a girl. What are you talking about? Um, my four-year-old, my three-year-old, soon to be four in two days, tomorrow. Uh, believes that Boba Fett's a girl. And I could not take that away from her. She has been terrified of Star Wars because every time she sees Star Wars, me and Liberty are watching something and Darth Vader's in it, and she she leaves the room. She'll literally get up, grab She has, like, her stuffed animal. She'll grab her stuffed animal and run out of the room. So she's kind of easing into the Star Wars thing. So, have like, you ever felt guilty about that? Have you ever felt guilty about that? No. <laughs> no, I tell Andrew, this is a rite of passage. She has to go into the cave and face her deepest fears like Luke did. Only what she brings with her would be what's in that cave. But anyways, it was it was cool, man. So she just like, you know, Boba Fett has been the one that's causing her conversion. It's OK that Boba Fett's a girl. It's OK. We're just. I, we're have you heard that the new theory is that Luke Skywalker has uh, Darth Vader's kyber crystal around his neck from his lightsaber? No. Because there's the one scene, and they're like, okay, it could just be costume jewelry, but I think that's the red crystal for Darth Vader's lightsaber. And that's what Kylo Ren really wants. Well, so Luke, you, you know this, right? That Luke Luke learned the dark side. He studied the dark side in between the two movies. Okay, you know what? First of all, you need to take your, your theories <laughs> and just realize... They're total bunk, okay? Han <laughs> Solo was a stormtrooper. Oh, look. Here's the deal. Unless it happened in the movie, it's not real. We don't know mm. if it's a real, you know, backstory. So when the Han Solo movie comes out, if we see that Han Solo was a stormtrooper, then I'll buy into that whole theory. But until then, I don't buy You're it. You're going to see it. Well, and maybe we will, but until it's in a movie, it's all made up. Hey, I'm a Christian. I don't care if most of the world doesn't believe my fancy theories. <laughs> I'm used to that. I do care. I care deeply. I care very much what people believe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that. Yeah. When it comes to the gospel, yes. But here's the deal. The reality <laughs> is that... Um, Force choking someone like Luke did, that is never something that a Jedi does. And he does it to the Gamorrean card. Jedis <sighs> don't force choke. Even Star Wars Rebels brings that out. Oh, first of all, cartoon. So, again. But, but canon. It is canon. You, you get over your canon idea. You, you've just got this pervert. Don't you understand that Hanna-Barbera is just trying to make some money? Yeah. Is Hanna-Barbera doing it? No, but I just thought I'd say that because I liked it better. I mean, do we do we really take uh, the Planet of the Ewoks movie as canon or or Chewbacca's okay. parents? Do you remember Chewbacca's okay, parents? Okay, stop, stop. Do you remember stop. Chewbacca's parents? No more. <laughs> no more. Don't even bring up the Christmas special. I'm He's just saying. Win. I give. Uncle. Uncle. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, we should. What are we talking about? Oh, well, we did tell them. We're talking about spiritual gifts <laughs> and Star so Wars. This, <laughs> we probably should get to it, shouldn't we? 
Well, yeah, because I'm on limited time today, and we are 20 minutes in, so, you know. We're on limited time and intelligence, so we probably should just get right down to it. Great, Scott! It's time for this week's topic! And this week's episode of the Church Planner Podcast is being brought to you by BivoWebinar.com. Head on over to BivoWebinar.com and sit through a webinar with yours truly at BivoWebinar.com. Amen. And the other thing is... um, it's also being brought to you by me. Reaching the Unreached <laughs> book. Well, dot com. I was going to talk about that, but let me quickly say, if you're marking your calendars and you want to join me, let me give you a couple of events that I'm going to be speaking at. No, Pete was not. Pete, you were not invited. I'm first. never invited. <laughs> That's just like, I think the best one to me, never mind. I can't even share that story publicly. Never mind. <laughs> Let's just say that one of us was asked to go speak somewhere and to provide some other speakers. And you're like, hey, Pete, I'm going to have you come in. I go, no, you don't understand. They don't actually want me. They would have asked for me <laughs> if they wanted me. Yeah, uh, Peyton, we've decided to drop you from the lineup. Yeah. We saw that you included Pete Mitchell as a speaker. Uh, we've now questioned your judgment. So here's the deal. Uh, May 16th. I am going to be at the San Diego Southern Baptist Convention Gathering uh, that starts pretty early. I actually don't have all the details, but you can email me at Peyton at churchplannermag.com and, or check my Facebook. I'm getting ready to post those. I'll probably post them on Church Planner Magazine. The other one is May 17th. I'm going to be at the Stadia Inland Empire Church Planner Gathering in Corona. That's May 17th. This is like three days in a row, four days in a row. I got four days in a row. Then on May 18th, I'm going to be at the Soma Gathering. Um, now, I'm not speaking there, at least they haven't asked me to speak, but they are going to promote the book, and I'm going to be there uh, shaking hands and kissing babies. That's going to be in Oceanside at Generation Church. Then May 19th is my book launch party at My Sending Church Refuge, Huntington Beach. Then at, uh, let's see. Um, you should have invited me to that. I would have loved to have come. You are coming to that. I wasn't invited. What? To the book launch. I haven't publicly advertised it yet. Remember I asked you to do something hey, at it? Going, is no, that no, all no. I am? Part of the public to you? <laughs> I did ask you. And you go, no, you don't want me to do anything. <laughs> but anyways, uh, May 27th and May 28th, I will be in Palm Springs at Hope City Church. And I'll be speaking there. Believe it or not, churches have me speak sometimes. In June, on June 1st, I'll be at the Stadia San Diego Church Planning event. On June 5th, I'll be at the Acts 29th. San Diego Church Planners Gathering, and on June 26th and 27th, I'll be preaching at Refuge Huntington Beach, and that is Saturday and Sunday services. Well, uh, to that, all I can report is that uh, on May 6th, I'll be watching a movie at uh, my movie theater in my house. You're welcome to join me there. Uh, May 8th, I'll be speaking in Idaho at uh, some <laughs> event at Coeur d'Alene, wherever that is. Uh, I'm sure May 9th, 10th, and 11th, I'll be watching movies every night in my home theater. That's about all we I need, got. We need to do those cool commercials that you knew growing up in Southern California. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. It's wild. Remember those? Dude, that's for monster trucks. Do I know. You, do you realize that when when those commercials come on TV, and I know this is supposed to be the end of Smack Talk, <laughs> the <laughs> second you see the first commercial, you have to go buy your ticket in Southern California or they are sold out. Are you serious? Yeah, if you wait like a day or two, it's too late because they never come out here to the West Coast. So the tickets are gone like that. Because I want to take awesome my son to see monster right? trucks, man. They they like embed embed themselves. What if we organize Sunday, Sunday, Sunday? It's wild. But see, I'll only do it if it's in Orange County. I, I don't like going to the Coliseum. It's just horrible going up there. Dude, I'm going to Hollywood Bowl to see you too on the 21st hey you know those uh those hey here's 10 bands i've only seen nine of them can you guess which one it is that i haven't seen (laughs) i because i saw you did that i was almost gonna go all right guys here's 10 bands nine of which i have not seen and only one of which i've seen can you guess which one the problem is the one would have been a lie because i've never been to a concert in my life so it's so funny man is my brother um He's just seen, I think, every punk fan under the sun, every major, like, the dude loves music. 
And uh, and funny enough, he would put on there probably Barry Manilow, and everyone would guess that. But he loves Barry Manilow. Really, you would never know that about my brother. Really, but he loves. In fact, he loves Golden Girls. I recently got him an awesome brother gift. I saw a Golden Girls shirt that said "Stay Golden," and I bought it for him and sent it off to him. Told him I got an awesome brother gift coming for you for being an awesome brother. Mailed him a Golden Girl. So when he 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 runs a motorcycle club that uh, yeah he he said I'm I'm wearing that to my gathering, and he would because he's pretty tough and no one can no one can fight him and beat him. So you yeah, know that's the way it works. Yeah, that that's how his club works for sure. <laughs> so okay, cool. Let's uh, let's go ahead and start, shall we? Absolutely. Spiritual gifts. Right, well, what are they good for? Oh, great Scott! Uh, and just just to tease you with like the appearance of the end of Smack Talk, I heard they're making a part four to that. Shut up! I swear that's what I heard. Michael really? J and everything? Yeah. Okay, millennials have no idea what we're talking about, but that's just nope. the greatest news I've ever heard in my life. I right, 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 dude. I am I am so going to that. Wait, there was something else, didn't I? <gasps> I told you this week, Pacific Rim two next year. It's going to be a church planner blowout. I'm going to rent out the theater. All church planners all the time. Pacific Rim two. That's all I'm saying. What? What? That's crazy. You can't be true. I listen to the theme song to Pacific Rim all the time in my car. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Dude, I love it. That and CNC Music Factory. <laughs> I know you do that. <laughs> I got the power. Dun, 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 dun. All, all right, right. Let's actually cool. get into our topic now that we're way past Smack Talk. All right. Cool. So... Um, we were talking about the gifts last time talked that we ended with, um, the miracles, which was the end of the manifestation gifts. So today we need to talk about the motivational gifts, which are serving helps teaching, giving exhortation, encouragement, administration, and leadership. And by the way, there are gifts that um, are not mentioned because, as we said before, that this is not a comprehensive list of gifts. Now, there are those that would say, whoa, no, the Holy Spirit and the sovereignty put every gift in there. Um, we're never told that. We're never given a comprehensive list. There's an overlap in Paul's list of giftings, and then there's some where he mentions gifts that aren't mentioned in the other lists. So we we don't have any reason to believe that all of the gifts have been revealed to us. I think he discusses the ones primarily that are of importance for him to discuss at that time. Because you and I have but the gift of podcasting. We, you know, it's funny. I, I think there's gifts, and I, I mentioned the gift of faith, for example, for the apostolic guys. that I, I believe most apostolic church planners have the gift of faith. I mentioned that in Church Zero. Um, I also think that there is, um, I think there's a gift. And I, I can't verify it biblically, but experientially, I do think that, that there's a gift of missional strategy. I think that mm-hmm. when you are called in, kind of like Don Richardson's Peace Child, um, he, if you don't know the story, that's a mission classic, definitely a book worth reading. Don Richardson was a, a missionary in the 60s or 70s to a tribe of um, you can South get it American on, tribes. You can get it on audible.com forward slash CPM. Uh, yeah, free. Or listen to it. Thank you, Pete. Um, the, the, these were warring tribes, and every time he tried to share the gospel with them, they got all excited when he talked about Judas. Judas, to their culture, was the hero because they valued deception and trickery. So um, he would be so discouraged because they were like, "Ah, Jesus is the sucker, but Judas, you know, tell us how to follow Judas." And so, you know, he was he was leaving that tribe as a failed missionary. War broke out in the tribe, and of course he's watching them die, and they're watching, you know, he's watching them die as a missionary without Christ, and it was just breaking his heart. And so he was coming off the mission field, and um, suddenly someone announced the truths, and the one of the tribe members gave his child, a newborn baby, to the other chief, and said, "This is the peace child," and what they do is they exchange children and raise them in the other tribe. And as long as that child is alive, they will have uh, peace 
as two warring tribes. And he was like, there's my end. That's my gospel end. Well, his theory in the book is that every culture, if you're patient enough and you massage it enough, you will find the Holy Spirit has hardwired a connection to the gospel to them. And so that that's that became a big deal in mission circles that you got to execute the culture, you got to understand them, and there will somewhere be a gospel in. And uh, and at the end of the day, um, I think that church planners get this. I think apostolics get this, where they go in in every church planning scenario, context, neighborhood, whatever. There's a gospel in, and I call it gospel strategy. I think that's a spiritual gift because I will notice that 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 gifting comes upon me when I get consulted. Mm. Um, by an established church or whatever, I, I can, I, I know exactly what needs to be done in that neighborhood. And, um, it, you know, it, it served me well in church planning and being a missionary and, but I think it's spiritual. I don't think I'm smart enough to figure stuff out, but there's times I'm like, okay, that's the Lord. And, uh, anyways, yeah. I did. Um, yeah. I did just so, buy that book on audible, by the way. Did you just buy it? I did. Right on. And you guys can get it for free at audibletrial.com forward slash CPM. Yeah, and he's a cool dude, too. He used to speak at Perspectives. I actually heard him speak at the Perspectives class at the Center for U.S. World Missions years ago. And he he, he said some amazing things, I got to say. He he changed the way I thought in one talk. So um, I don't know if he's alive anymore, but it was like 20 years ago. He was kind of pushing it then. Wow. So anyways, um, so anyways, uh, so we're not sure we have all the gifts, but let's talk about some of these gifts that are, um, you know, like I said, the motivational gifts. Um, these are our gifts like the, the gift of serving. Um, I, you got to be careful with this because this is kind of what every pastor thinks that everyone who can't preach has in his church. Right. You think, oh, serving. No, the gift of serving is somebody who they love to serve people. And I think in particular, not serving the church, not serving, I mean like serving others. Somebody who is going to come around and go, oh, you know, you, you say something like, oh, I've got, you know, uh, my wife is in the hospital and someone goes, hey, who's who's cooking food for you? You know, boom. And they love to do this and they'll do this outside of the church as well. And it becomes a gospel inroads. Same with the gift of help. Someone who helps you do things. Um, like I got a buddy, he was a mechanic. And he was a dirty, crooked mechanic. This guy I used to mentor. He might be listening. Um, he's a dirty, crooked mechanic. He used to rip people off. When he came to faith, he completely did an about face and he repented. You know how like the guy who, the tax collector, who says to Jesus, look, I, I, what should I do? And Jesus says, restore what you've stolen. And he goes, Lord, I've done that and more already, you know. Um, that's what he decided to do. So he started a faith-based ministry entirely dependent on donations, and he would work on people's cars. And he would find the single mothers. He would find, you know, people that were old and had pensions but needed to get around. And he would he would literally uh, help that community. So I think there's there's those things. Then you have the gift of teaching, which, again, is motivational. These are motivational gifts. They help others. They're kind of like they catalyze people. So teaching is interesting. Teaching can be one-on-one. It's involved in discipleship. Um, teaching can be from the pulpit. Teaching can be in a small group. You know, when, you, when you're in an interactive environment, um, you can tell sometimes during discussion, people have the gift of teaching where they can bring great clarity to spiritual truth. They may never, ever enter a pulpit, but they're able to teach. And Priscilla and Aquila, of course, one-on-one with Apollos, they taught him and they discipled him. So don't think when you see a gift of teaching, that, oh, you know, that means I'm a teacher. No, um, the gift of teaching can happen in many different ways. I would say that uh, I'm teaching here. I'm not in a pulpit. I'm not in a church. But I have the gift of teaching. It's why I write. It's why I talk. I mean, you know, and uh, to be honest, I, I know this sounds crazy, but I love teaching out of the church more than I do in it. It's just what I love because I think some people, they just love to teach from the pulpit. 
and preaching is one of my strongest gifts. Um, but I kind of personally get more fulfilled meeting with someone and teaching them in, in one-on-one or in a small group through discussion. Know what I'm saying? Is it limited to just uh, <clears throat> things of a biblical nature, if you have that gift? I don't think it's teaching sermons or Bible studies. I think there's a lot of things you can teach. Like, um, no, I think you could teach people like what you're doing, you know, um, where you're teaching people how to, um, you know, be consultants. Rip and people like off. Oh, wait. No, sorry. No, but I, I think the Holy Spirit can <clears throat> use it because you're you're teaching people something that I, I do really think it has it has to do with um, spiritual things primarily. Yeah. But I think you can be given that gifting for things that are – I think all of these gifts are for kingdom work hmm. is what I'm trying to say. So if you're doing something – that is involving kingdom work, then I think you should be, particularly in what you're doing, I think you should be asking, Lord, this is for your kingdom. Um, please give me the, you know, anoint me, give me this gifting, um, help me teach, give clarity, you know. Like you guys probably don't know this, but Pete and I pray uh, every time before we do the podcast. We're always asking because teaching is a gift. And, and that's for your benefit, church planner. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's funny is that like teaching you'll you'll hear people say like oh I'm just a good teacher and or I'm I I have the gift of teaching here's the deal talking is not teaching um you can waste 30 minutes in a pulpit and I can waste and I'm sure I do and have uh 30 minutes on a podcast without teaching Teaching is a spiritual gift. The way that you know that teaching is operating is the person's learning. So it's important that the person on the other end of you is able to hear you. And that that's why the Holy Spirit is involved in both the speaker and the listener for teaching to have happened. It's, it's the Holy Spirit spanning that gap between two points, the person teaching and the person receiving, you know, that that's when the gift of teaching is an operation. It, it's kind of like the monk at the monastery who, um, I can't remember what they get. They had a nickname for him. If I remember that, I wasn't planning on telling this story, but, um, they, I think he just preached the beatitudes and they called him like brother beatitude or something. So every time he went in there, he'd elaborate on the beatitudes and he was terrible. And like monks would fall asleep and one day the, the abbot takes him aside and says, Hey, uh, brother, thank you for trying to bless us with teaching on the Beatitudes, but I don't think you have the gift of teaching. And he goes, but I know I have the gift of teaching. I do. I mean, I, I definitely have it. And he, he just adamantly said he had the gift of teaching and the abbot just kind of smiled at him and said, okay, brother, I'm not going to argue with you on that. Perhaps none of us have the gift of hearing you, you know, and, and, and that just emphasizes what that's what teaching has to be. It has to be both anointed. And Jesus would say this. He would say, be careful how you hear Jesus when he was teaching. No doubt Jesus was a gifted teacher, but he would also tell the listener, be careful how you hear. Um, so teaching is a two way street, hmm. right? Interesting. So, um, giving, this is a gift that, uh, maybe Pete could talk about <laughs> if Pete has it. I don't think I have it. I know I don't have it actually. Yeah. <clears throat> well, okay. Why don't you think you have it? Because I don't give anything above and beyond what God tells us to give. I don't think. Yeah. But if if you felt God prompting you to give, though, right? Like, I, I think personally, I think the gift. I, you know, gift here's is, the thing, man. I've talked about this on the podcast. I don't I don't get those feelings like you guys all get. I don't have the God prompting or, you know, God gave me a word. I, I hear that stuff, and I honestly think half the time you guys are making it up. The other half the time, maybe it's happening, <laughs> but I can't relate to it in any way, shape, or form. That's okay. We're, we're, we're still praying for your salvation. 
but uh, <laughs> a, a common <laughs> prayer of mine as well. <laughs> but I I think that okay. So when when someone says God told them to do something, sometimes fairly, that is really they just thought they should do that. Like no doubt, right? Like no one's going to argue that. There are times people will just use God language. Then there's other times where you know, I'm too stupid to know this, and somehow I know this. And I know this goes completely against what I would humanly know. And those are moments for me that are Holy Spirit moments or moments of clarity. Um, sometimes it's me realizing something. Sometimes I know, I can tell, this is how I know when God's speaking to me is I still believe the other thing, but I'm getting strongly pressed on me something different. And I'm like, okay, that's a voice of God right there. Sometimes it'll be a buddy telling me something because there's different ways God speaks through you. Sometimes he tells you through other people, but... Here's, here's where I think the gift of giving works in you, Pete, because it's not saying that you, if you have the gift of giving, you give more. I think what it is, is you're, oh, you're sensitive to where that money needs to go. Like, for example, um, I know about you. If you come across a need that is there, you will follow that prompting to give to them. And I would say that's God. You may not hear a voice, Pete, give to this person. <laughs> But I would love to hear that voice, by the way, <laughs> kicks in towards a church planner or your compassion kicks in towards someone doing kingdom work. And you're like, I'm going to be a channel to direct funds that way. And that's the gift of giving. It doesn't mean that you have to hear like a piercing voice from heaven. Hmm. It's just you're willing to be a channel. And that's what all the gifts are anyways, is channeling kingdom you know, gifts, really. I mean, and, and I'm not even talking about like finances, although this one happens to be, you know, monetary and spiritual. But that's what it is, really, is you're just channeling what God has given you, whether it's something that's a spiritual gift or a physical gift. You're channeling that through your own life into, you know, somewhere else where where you feel God wants it. So I hope that kind of makes sense. It's. Yeah, it does. It's it's kind of taken some of the mystique out of it, I suppose. Exhortation, encouragement. So these I, are I will your, definitely say I don't have the gift of encouragement. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that at all. <laughs> but that's okay, too, because sometimes, like, you need... Okay, so here's the thing. People don't value encouragement that's not genuine or sincere. So when... Uh, for example, like encouragement should not just be, oh, you know, buck up, little camper. Um, encouragement or exhortation is um, something that's motivational, keeps you going. And the way that that happens, yes, you have cheerleaders and you have people that keep you going strong. Um, and you need that. Like like Hebrews, one of the things we talk about in multiply training is the idea that, you know, you need to um, – uh, encourage one another daily. We're told to encourage one another daily as long as it's called today. Um, and, and he says, you know, lest you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. And one of the things that happens is sin is constantly speaking to us. Sin, hmm. you know, uh, the enemy, we're always hearing lies. The deceitfulness of sin means that lies are being told to you, right? Nonstop. So, because of that, I would say that discouragement is the norm for most people. And when he says encourage one another daily while it is called today, that's a carpe diem. That's saying, A, this isn't a suggestion, it's a command. The reason why is because sin is constantly hardening us through deceptiveness, through deceitfulness. So we're hearing the lies of the evil one all day. Therefore, we need to be encouraging. So every believer is told to encourage one another in Hebrews as long as it's called today. Do it today. Stop. Think about it. But that encouragement needs to be genuine. It needs to be something you specifically see in somebody. Um, leaders don't get a lot of encouragement. That's why it says share every good thing with your teacher. Um, but we we need to be encouraging. You know, um, We need to most people don't know if they're making an impact or a difference or if they have a place in the kingdom of God. I would say that because of sin's deceitfulness, most people walk around with an inferiority complex in the kingdom of God. And this is, again, motivation. It's, it's a motivational passage 
where he's talking about not losing heart, keep going, you know. And then he says, encourage one another. So encouragement is a way to keep people motivated. We're still in the motivational gifts. And Paul puts these all together um, in 12, Romans 12, 3 through 8. Then you have the gift of administration, which I for sure don't have. <laughs> I am not an administrator. So there are people that are kind of like the trellis, you know, to the, to the, or I'm more of the organic hippie kind of guy. I like, I like to do more organic spirit, you know, kingdom stuff. But then you've got people who, you know, they walk away and go, okay, how are we going to do this? So the guy who I would say mm-hmm. is very much like that is a guy like Krikoff. Mm. If, if I am going to do something, it doesn't matter. Like it would be some harebrained scheme. Kirkoff will walk away from any discussion thinking, what do we need for that? How are we going to make that happen? And the amount of times that guy has saved the bacon in a church plant scenario, because he just knew it needed to be there, um, is amazing. And so, you know, even the gift of administration, you, you have that. You, you have people that kind of make this thing tick. So we call him the MacGyver in a, in a church plant. He's always got, you know, he's a guy that's come up with the backup plan. He's a guy that's got the generator in the back of his truck. He's a guy that's got the, you know, those little twisty ties. He's a guy that's got the spare parts and light bulbs. And, and I'm not just talking about equipment. I mean, he's the contingency plan guy. He's the guy that's saying, do we have this? Do we have that? Do we have this? And he'll run with it and he'll make it happen. And then you have the gift of leadership. And leadership doesn't mean that it's only the pastor. Imagine if the gift of leadership only emerged when you had a position, right? That would suck. I mean, personally, I think we're meant to multiply a lot faster than we ever do. So I think the gift is there in many more people than are ever going to be in our current Western context, the leader of the church. I think that leadership is needed anytime the people of God get together. And so leadership often is the person being the example. Um, so I don't see leadership as like, I have the ability to inspire. Um, that's important. I mean, I, I love what Mac Lake, he's my mentor. Uh, Mac Lake, talks about this. He says there are, there is leadership spirit and leadership skill. And he points to David and says, David had both. He had leadership spirit. He could inspire people, but he also had leadership skill. He could actually orchestrate, organize, you know, had projects like the building of the temple, you know, all this cool stuff that David did. That was Israel's golden years. But you know what it is, where you sometimes have people who have leadership spirit, but when you go to follow them, they have no skill. They can't take anywhere because they can't run things. And then you have people who have no leadership spirit at all. They can't inspire anyone, but they have really good skill. And those often become executive pastors, sorry guys, or um, administrative leaders and because they have all the skill. But they're not very inspirational and they still have a place in the kingdom. But, but the bottom line is it's cool when you got both, when you got both types, the inspirational leader and the skillful leader. Great. But I don't even think that's what this gift is. When I see the gift of leadership in, um, in, in the church, what I really think it is, is the imitation of Jesus, right? Almost every epistle, um, you know, uh, Paul says, imitate me just as I imitate Christ Jesus. Um, For you know my my manner of life and conduct when I was amongst you. Um, uh, Timothy, these things and do do these things you saw me here. uh, uh, These things you saw in me, um, uh, these things do and put into practice or however I'm butchering it, but. Paul constantly is saying, imitate me as I imitate Christ Jesus. And that's leadership. It's it's a game of follow the leader. So you can have people that are just modeling Christ-like behavior in their life. And they are leaders. Why? Because they're showing you who Jesus is. 
through their life and their manner of life and their conduct. That's why um, Paul says to Timothy, watch your life and doctrine closely. I see a lot of Facebook groups or people online that they're really, uh, you know, uh, they've boned up on theology. Um, but it's, I wouldn't follow their life. Mm. You know, it, their doctrine is fine. Um, they, in fact, they're really proud of their doctrine. But, you know, uh, watch your life and doctrine closely. Like, watch both. So, to me, leadership is when I see a guy and I think, man, that guy walks with God. And I'm inspired around him. And I want I want to grow closer to God. I I see that guy's life. I see the way he talks to his kids and his wife. And his wife really respects him. And lost people around him love him. Man, I want to be like him. Read a book um, recently this year. And the guy was talking about how he... He was a sportscaster, and he would fill in sometimes for his buddy, who was a Christian. And he goes, he goes, it's a really well-known show, and his partner on there is really foul-mouthed and um, really loud and really obnoxious and really offensive. And he goes, and I, I always think, how do you, how do you serve with this dude, man? Because you're such an awesome Christian. And he goes, and then I, I filled in for him once, and I met this guy, and he was just cussing left and right, and this and that. And I said to him, so what's it like to work with? And he said, I mentioned my Christian buddy. And he said, the guy, um, he said, the guy got tears in his eyes and said, oh, him? Let me tell you something about him. And he thought at first, before he could see the tears, I was going to start bagging on him. And he goes, look, see that over there? See that award? He gave me that a week ago. Just like for for being, you know, uh, awesome at my job. And he's like, you don't have to do that. Like, look, he went and had that made for me. He's like, who does that? And he's like, and then, and he just started listing off all this incredible stuff that this guy did as a Christian. And he's like, that guy, let me tell you something about that guy. That guy is one of the nicest, coolest people I've ever met. And he does credit to what a Christian should be. That's powerful, man. Mm. That's leadership. That's when you are modeling Jesus to people. And, man, the world needs that, not just from people standing in a pulpit, but from everybody. So, anyways, guys, this is kind of the, the, the close. I mean, there's a lot more. I've got about two more pages of notes, but uh, I was hoping this would be something that would just stimulate us and encourage us into uh, next week when we're going to talk about reaching the unreached. What? <laughs> of a lost art. So, Pete's going to be interviewing me be like the old times Pete, like hardcore again <clears throat> where where you won't even let me talk <laughs> well okay kind of like this yeah so so all i gotta know is uh at the end am i supposed to ask you the fight question you can ask me the fight question because we know you're gonna say yes you could beat up anyone it's short man syndrome i got asked that on on a on an interview recently somebody asked me the fight question who they put you with Oh, I can't even remember. It was Caesar Kalinowski. Oh, he, he asked me. He asked me. He didn't put me against Caesar. Oh, what do you okay. mean? Ooh, I killed that guy. Yeah, but he got like, long arms, man. He, he's he he's got reach. He's quick. He's a lot older than me, but uh, he he's he's fit. He's it's deceptive how he's old got he reach. Is. Yeah, yeah, he does. He's staying fit. He's fitter than I am at my age. I told him I could beat up anyone because I have short man syndrome. And that's what a guy with short man syndrome always thinks. So I said, it doesn't matter who you get on here. That was my answer. I'm like, it doesn't matter who you get on. Short man syndrome, I think I could take everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, remember, guys, if uh, you need help with your uh, IRS compliance, your workman's comp, your administrative side, there is another organization that has that gifting, that has that skill set, and they will plug in for you and take over. And it's called, Peyton? Simplifychurch.com. Dot com. Right, awesome, guys. guys. Well, this, yeah, hey, this has been the Church Planner Podcast reminding you, if you want to reach the ones nobody's reaching, you better do what nobody's doing after <laughs> you go where nobody's going. Man, I butchered that. <laughs> but you know what I mean. See you guys next week. Thanks for joining us for another weekly episode of the Church Planner Podcast with Pete Mitchell and Peyton Jones. 
We'd love to hear your comments on this episode of the Church Planner Podcast. Visit us online and let us know what you thought at churchplannerpodcast.com. If you subscribe to us via iTunes and have enjoyed the podcast, leave us a positive review. The more positive reviews we receive in iTunes, the more iTunes will promote us to other church planners who would benefit from this show. This podcast is brought to you by the Church Planner Magazine, which is available in the iTunes newsstand or online via churchplannermagazine.com. Music